Hey everybody, I'm Howard and this is Otto's Retirement Corner. Today I want to talk about a video on YouTube I recently saw by Devin Carroll. A lot of you will know about him. He's, he's got over 400,000 subscribers. He's been on YouTube for several years. Um, he doesn't make a lot of videos, so I'm not that familiar with him. You know, I looked at his, his history. He's got 16 videos in the last six months. So I, I haven't seen him that often. I, I don't have a, a strong opinion one way or another about him. Maybe until I, I watch this video. Um, so the, the title of his video was The Simplest Social Security Fix No One Is Talking About. And in parentheses, No Tax Increase or Benefit Cut. Sounds pretty good, right? So he cites an article by someone named Brett Erend titled, Think Donald Trump has promised not to change Social Security? Think again. And I, I'm pretty sure I actually read this article. And it, it, uh, Carol's video doesn't seem to be so much about that part of it. Um, you know, they talk about, you know, Trump is quoted as saying, we won't cut Social Security. And he's saying, well, that's not the same as saying we won't change Social Security. So the suspicion is, Trump will change Social Security, but keep in mind, whether it's Biden or Trump or anybody else who's president, they don't have the power to change Social Security. That's going to come from Congress. They're going to have to pass a bill. Senate's going to have to pass it. And then a president for or against it will either sign or veto it. You know, thinking, oh, Biden's done nothing for us. Trump did nothing for us. Obama did nothing for us. Bush did nothing. You know, they don't have the power to do that. They can influence people, but if, you know, Congress and Senate isn't set up based upon their party affiliation, they have very little power. You know, there's going to have to be some agreement at some point, hopefully, before the trust fund runs out in nine years. So, they, they, within this article, they cite a blog post by the Cato Institute. And for those of you who don't know, the Cato Institute is a think tank. It's a libertarian. Now, understand, libertarians are against almost everything governmental. They don't like governmental agencies, they don't like taxes, uh, they don't like government control of anything. Um, you know, so keep that in mind as we talk about this. And I think we kind of see where Devin Carroll falls politically. He actually answered one of, one of the comments in, in underneath, um, you know, where someone pretty much said the same thing, hey, we're starting to see, you know, some political leanings here. And he said, hey, in my business, he's a personal financial planner. I keep that to myself, but on YouTube, I can say whatever I want. So he was, I think he was kind of admitting it without admitting it. Um, so the, the key point from this Cato Institute study is that Social Security benefits are growing too fast. And that's the key reason the program or the trust fund isn't sustainable. So it's not the fact that there aren't enough incoming taxes to keep up with benefits and the growing number of uh, retirees, which is growing faster than the number of new employees that are contributing to Social Security, it's that benefits are too high, that they grow too fast and people get too much in benefits. And not a shocking <laughs> Cato Institute finding, because again, they don't like taxes. Um, so Carol then starts talking about himself and he says, assuming he files at 67 for Social Security benefits, which would be his FRA. I don't know how old he is. Maybe in the 50s. I don't know. And he assumes he'll live to 95, which, as it turns out, is convenient for his argument. And his wife takes about uh, half the benefit. He will get half the benefit he gets. Uh, he says together they'll make 5.5 million in Social Security benefits. <laughs> and, you know, then he goes on to say, I don't think that's what Roosevelt had in mind when they began Social Security program, you know, but that's the way it is. I paid it in. I, I expect my benefit. So, you know, I don't know how he gets the 5.5 million. Uh, certainly inflation can, you know, increase whatever his benefit's going to be before he hits 67. And then after 67, you know, for 28 years of collecting benefits, I don't know what he used as an inflation factor, you know, to figure out colas, but it, it had to be pretty hefty. Um, you know, I calculated what mine would be if I lived in 95 and started at age 70 and it came out to 2.6 million and I'm pretty close to the top and I was assuming about a, I think about a 3% in, in uh, COLA. So, you know, could he get the 5.5? I, I think with some, you know, aggressive assumptions, maybe he can. 
Uh, but let's let's you know put that aside for now. So he says, you know, in '77 they changed the way uh, inflation was calculated for benefits. Uh, they switched to a system where before you're 62, wage inflation is used to inflate your benefit amount, and then after you're 62, they use price inflation, the CPI that we're all familiar with, and that, you know that's what they use to, to figure the cola. So. You know, then he makes a statement over the last few decades, and he doesn't say what that is. He shows a graph, but it's not labeled. Just says few decades. Wages grew faster than prices. I don't, I don't doubt this. I'm having trouble coming up with, you know, a chart that shows one versus the other. Um, so, you know, then he says since 1978. So, you know, we're looking at almost 50 years. Um, wages grew at 4.28% and prices grew at 3.59%. Uh, the price inflation sounds right. The wage inflation could be pretty close. It sounds a little high, but let's let's just take that for what it is. So you know, then he cites a SSA uh, study, Social Security Administration study, that said if they switch back to price inflation instead of wage inflation, starting in 2029, that it would reduce 80% of the shortfall of the program, and you know, is it a little bit of a contradictory statement? It would, it would, you know, cover it almost up to the 75 years they typically look at, um, at 172 percent. So I don't know what that means because if, if it only covers 80 percent of the shortfall, it's got to be less than 100 percent. So I, I don't know, but suffice to say, it would make the the program healthy, based upon what the SSA is saying. So, you know, what effect would that have on benefits? And they say it would reduce benefits, and this is for people 57 and younger, because it would not start till 2029, not anybody collecting now or near collecting now. It would reduce benefits by 0.7% a year. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you add that up over 10, 20, 30 years, it becomes a significant amount when you compound it. And when you consider now that most people don't think they get anywhere near enough, and many of them, you know, are struggling, obviously, you know, if you start reducing benefits, and, and this is where he's saying it's not a cut. Um, <laughs> it says only in Washington politics is a smaller rise in the future considered a cut. So <laughs> you're going to get less than you thought you were going to get, but it's not a cut because it's still more than you're getting now. In essence, is what he's saying. So it's like your boss tells you, hey, for each of the next 10 years, we're going to give you a 3% increase every year. And then you know, they come back and you say, you know what? We can't afford that. We're going to give you a 2% increase every year for the next 10 years. Hey, what are you complaining about? You're still getting an increase. Okay, well, we've set this expectation. We've set up this program. And now we're saying we're going to change it. And I'm not saying this is a bad idea. I'm just saying calling it something other than a benefit cut is disingenuous. Um, most people will see this as a benefit cut. A huge majority of people in the comments saw it as a benefit cut um, and maybe not the solution. Uh, so, you know, then he asks, why isn't this being talked about? This, this should be very popular. Why is no one talking about this? And this is where we see a little bit of maybe a libertarian bent. Um, you know, he said politicians prefer complex solutions over simple solutions, and this is a very simple solution. Um, and it's because they can justify tax increases and expand control if they do complex solutions. So again, it's sort of the Cato Institute libertarian mindset of, hey, the only reason they want to make these changes is because they love taxes. We don't like taxes. We think this is a better solution. <coughs> Excuse me. He then goes on to say that it's an eight hundred thousand dollar cut to his lifetime benefits, and he's okay with that. So instead of five point five million for him and his wife through age ninety five, they'll get about four point seven million. If you hear some squeaking in the background, that's Otter playing with a toy. Otter, stop it! We're live. Otter, we're live. Come here, boy. So. He's such a ham, isn't he? Uh, so, you know, th this is him saying, you know, it's not a big deal. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll lose $800,000 and I'm okay with that. 
you know, if you're at the lower end of the scale and it's $80,000 over 20 years and it's $4,000 a year and you need that money to survive and you're just over poverty, you know, it's, it's a big deal. It's a benefit cut for you. So, you know, like I said, in the comments, uh, and there were a lot of them, and, you know, I tried to have conversations with people, but they don't respond much. Um, not only were most of the comments negative about this plan, but, you know, they thought it was a cut. And I saw a huge number of people just continuing to quote myths about Social Security. So I'm going to address that soon in a video. I've addressed it before, but clearly I need to address it maybe once a month. Um, so, you know, tell me what you think. Um, you know, would you rather see a tax increase, though, instead of paying 6.2%, you pay 6.8% and get the benefit you thought you were going to get? Or would you rather not pay more taxes now while you're working and, you know, get a smaller benefit? Is it, you know, six of one, have it done the other? Um, I don't know the math on that. I, you know, I, we have to trust the SSA. Um, you know, I don't trust Devin Carroll to do the math. Uh, we'll see. So uh, give me your comments. Uh, let me know if you like this video. Um, please subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.